We're back with another challenge map, this time in the United Kingdom, and <laughs> we have zero starting cash. Thankfully, there are a few fragments of existing infrastructure from a failed dinosaur park that used to be sitting on this location. And then there are a number of escaped and wild roaming dinosaurs from the remains of that previous park. These guys can serve as tiny little money factories, so we need to get out there and capture as many as we possibly can and then sell them off to the highest bidder to be able to have any hope of turning this into a park. We also need to be careful what existing infrastructure we use and what we recycle to be able to get a little bit of a refund. I want to be able to use, obviously, all of this initial infrastructure. And then I also think we are actually going to use this exhibit. We might move the viewing gallery over to a better position, repair these fences, and we'll need to provide a power source. Unfortunately, we do have this backup generator. We're going to use that. And then this exhibit way over here... Yeah, I'm not going to use any of this, so we're going to trash all of these fences. The hatchery we do want to keep. We will repair it and then move it to another location. That should be able to save us some money, uh, but this backup generator can go. We can use the cash. And then whatever this exhibit was, it is way too small to be able to hold anybody to make a meaningful exhibit. So we're going to recycle all of this and make up a little bit more money. There we are. About $10,000 of profit turned it. <laughs> it's so pathetic. Our capture team is standing by, so it's time to go catch us some dinos. We have herds of the wild ones roaming all around here. We want to find these nearby ones. He's so hard to spot in the grass. Where is he? There he is. Ping this guy off. Okay, these guys go down in now a single dart. Sure Good to know. Good to know. All those guys have been downed, and I forgot I need to be taking pictures of these guys to earn a little bit extra. There we go. The Nigerosaurus socializing, $62,000. Ooh, I hope, that, I hope that missing those pictures on the other dinos that we just tranquilized is not a make or break deal here. Sometimes when you are just starting out on these, playing on Jurassic difficulty, something like that can be a deal breaker. We found the herd of Nastioceratops. I'm going to drop these guys. Third one right here on the wings. Right now we're just trying to sedate everyone and then we're going to go through, look at their appeal ratings, see which ones we are going to keep for our initial exhibit and which ones will be sold to be able to fund the construction of that exhibit. The, uh, the sedatives last for about 10 minutes, so we've got plenty of time to be able to hit everyone down them and then make our choices. These guys are tiny. Oh, uh, hitting them. What a shot hit such a small Jesus target survived. running through the grass. The result of her Oof, with this the guy's on point. <laughs> okay, everybody is down. down. Let's see who we are going to keep. So we have the, the herd of Celiophysis, really little guys. Their appeal is 21. And there are one, two, three, four, five, six, seven of them. So the appeal rating for that exhibit would be about 140. Three Nastioceratops, their appeal is 60, so that exhibit would be worth 180 appeal. Ah, the Baryonyx, a potential star of the show, 326 appeal, so that's the best by far out of what we have found. Two of these guys, ooh, 218 appeal, that means that exhibit is at 240, or sorry, 440 that's looking like what we will go with unless these final herd of dinosaurs have anything to say about it. The Dracorex. They're at 50 appeal. And there are 1, 2, 3, 4, 5 of them. So 250. Yeah, so those little sauropods look like they are far and away our best option to be able to begin. And then I would really love to be able to hold over somebody else. Unfortunately, I don't have comfort data to know who might be happy living with the other types. 
I know how expensive it can be to begin a park, so we're gonna play it better safe than sorry, and we're gonna sell everybody besides those sauropods that we're using for our initial exhibit. So goodbye, Draco Rexes. 60K out of every single one of these guys. Pressing R gives you the option to be able to sell them out of the park when you have the uh, transportation mode set up. Ah, look at that. There's actually one that I did not down. Well, we can come back for him later. There's another, there's two remaining. Okay, well, we could hunt them down and add them to the exhibit later on, or we will see where we're at for money if we really feel like we need the extra, what do they give us, 100K? Hey, the Baryonyx goes for a quarter of a million dollars. That's the kind of shot in the arm that we needed. What do the Nastioceratops go for? 60,000, all right. They made the comparison to modern day cattle with the Nastioceratops, and I feel like, I don't know how exactly what the uh, the big prize cattle go for, but I feel like it's not too far off, and that's shocking to me. Uh, $10,000 is all we are getting for these little guys, but every penny counts. It seems like there has to be somebody willing to pay more than that to get a real live dinosaur. I mean, come on. Purebred dogs go for thousands. Now we watch our income skyrocket. We'll take direct control of this ranger team to go around and do the initial repairs that we need. All of these helicopters coming around are making the sails. There they go, lifting away the dinos. And we're waiting for 140,000. 140,000 to be able to bring back online this backup generator. Wow. What do, what does it cost just to straight up replace? It doesn't cost a lot more to straight up replace. All right, so we're not saving too much money with this existing infrastructure. Now to go around and fix up the enclosure, get that fence online, and keep on swinging around all the way through into the viewing gallery as well. Now that things are getting all set up, we're going to bring these guys back around to their enclosure. And here the viewing gallery is set up, but I don't like its location. Everything was wrong about this park. The, the initial infrastructure was all absolute garbage. Hot, hot garbage. Now we have to run a path all the way out to be able to make it to that viewing facility. So we'll kind of snake along this way. Connect up and it's important that we keep power provided to these buildings. So we have to leave this backup generator here. That means we're actually gonna have to build another backup generator to electrify this fence. Uh, another 174,000 down the drain. Make sure that we get a gate here in the enclosure. And did I see that right? We can't build fences? I have to do research just to get fences? We're really, we're starting from nothing. Okay, they're gonna want a little bit of water. We'll get that through to here. We we'll want to repair that amenity and then do a wellness check over here, making sure that they, uh, they'll they have a food source. I'm not sure exactly what they eat, but now that they're here and a viewing gallery is set up, the park should be set to, oh, there. There's our very first tick on the star rating. Okay, so now we want to make sure that we get our base level research, the medium amenity, no, no, not the medium amenities, go back, go back. I need to find the guest comfort here. The core guest buildings needs to come through for us. Oh, we need a, we need a science center to be able to research anything. How much is that gonna cost me? Quarter of a million dollars for a science center. Ow, it hurts. Time to come through here. What are you looking for? Forest and ground fiber. Easy enough to provide. Though I will say, let's pause and go over some of the other challenge criteria. So not only were we having to start from zero money, which I think is the largest challenge here on the map, also our research tasks will cost 20% more, terrain editing will cost 50% more, and all tasks will take 35% longer. We have a max of two staff centers. I don't really see that being a hindrance with the way I play. And we have a very high risk of sabotage. So we need to be careful when events come up that will lower, either raise 
increase unrest or lower the publicity rating, it will mean that we have a much higher chance of actually getting sabotaged, whereas usually this will go up and then eventually settle back down without anything too negative happening to us. Let's kind of bifurcate the exhibit. We'll get the ground fiber running along this side with the pond, and then we'll go over here to forest, and we'll place some of this in. Oh, I love this. I love this forest because it is so sparse. You're still going to be able to see the dinosaurs through the trees, but they're going to be happy because there is technically forest within that area. And are we making money? We have to be. Oh, look at this. We're making money. Our operating costs are so low. <laughs> well, that's what happens when you only have a one scientist on staff. I guess that's considered us, the owners. We're the only people working here. Okay, they are moderately comfortable. We will come back to them a little bit later, but we want to make sure that we are getting as many guests as we can. Ah, okay. We would also really like to get a good, good contract. We need more scientists to effectively run the park. That's true, but I don't have the ability to pay a scientist right now. Getting the extra 190000 immediately would be nice. What is Picture It going to be? Because Picture It is usually based on what dinosaurs you have unlocked in terms of their genome and it doesn't look at what you have in the park. We don't have these guys unlocked because they were wild dinosaurs. I want to see what this is. Photograph a dinosaur a drinking. To see if we can that should get definitely be possible. Let's configure our gift shop just to make sure we're making as much as we can. This scenario, I believe, is limited so that we're only getting the two guest types. I could be wrong. There are some of these scenarios that will only give you two guest types. I guess that wasn't actually listed in the constraints. It's probably from something else that I had seen. Yeah, so we'll throw in the fossil display and nothing else really helps us. But at least we start making a little bit more out of our hat sales. Oh man, we are in trouble with staff. He's a 400. That gives us cheaper expeditions. Well, thanks for helping us start the park, Peng, but couldn't you have at least been good at two things? Moderately good at two things? That's all I ask. Oh, that guy looks like he might be going for a drink. Okay, time to look for our, our photo. No, no, don't finish your drink before I get there. Ah! Yeah, we got it! Yes! Contract completed. Now we have money. We'll want to go ahead and throw down the emergency shelter, find a kind of central zone for that. And then we want to make sure that we have the restroom as well for the guests. Getting all of these up so that the guest's comfort rating is not abysmally low. So that the way that this works out is you have your appeal rating and that gives you your potential guest number. Then your guest comfort determines how many of your potential guests actually come to the park. Excess building supplies, amazing. We can get an extra $18,000. I wish I had the repair all structures option for back when everything was broken. Ooh. I just realized I still have a bunch of things that are broken and expensive to fix. I definitely should have picked the other option. Ah, uh, yeah. The repair value is way more expensive than 18k. Some more guest amenities here will be important. Now that we have a few more people coming into the park. So we've got that set up and then we want... What is the other one? Uh, drinks or food? That was drinks. Time to grab a ranger post for this exhibit. We'll slink it over here, expecting that if we extend the exhibit, we should probably look at the map and see what we're dealing with. So we have this central zone, then we have a little piece here and a little piece over here. These are all really tight and small, so we're going to have to be very careful with how we use space and also how we ultimately expand. Probably going to rely on a monorail system to keep our transportation level high enough, but that's still a ways in the future. Right now, I'm kind of targeting expanding this exhibit in this direction, most likely. So, not that the placement of that ranger post changes all that much if you uh, consider the expansion. And then Ranger Team 1 is going to do wellness checks over here. They're off right now to do a repair on the hatchery, and then we'll be able to move the hatchery over here grab up as much of that quote-unquote free infrastructure that they gave us as possible to be able to move on. We actually have about one and a half stars out of just these two dinos. These guys are the 
definitely great starting pieces. I really wanted to research fences. What does it take to research fences and why can I not do it right now? Why is it grayed out? I don't know why I was grayed out, but we can do it right now. Let's grab it. It's gonna be such a, a thing that I just assume I have. I need to get it right now. Otherwise I'm gonna forget when I want to expand. Now that our guest comfort rating is a way, way up, we are getting all of the potential guests, which is amazing because it's actually close to, well, with 200 guests in the park, we're getting about 150 in all the amenities. Oh no, someone got sick. I can't have you guys getting sick. Government provide cash injection. Invest in infrastructure to gain half a million dollars, or I can get a rest for my scientists and it increased to my publicity rating. I'm gonna take the cash. It's not a lot, but it should still allow us to go ahead. What is our bottom line looking like? $150,000 a minute. That is good enough to be able to get a second scientist, I believe. And we're going to look for another logistics character. I don't really want another 400 though, completely leaving me uh, incapable in any of the other categories. Something like, Something like over here, 213, 231. Honestly, over here, yeah, kudo. We'll take kudo. Wow, it took the ranger team long enough to be able to make it out here. So the hatchery is repairing, and then we will move it over as soon as it is done being repaired. I love all the scaffolding, though. It's too bad that they never simulated workers. Now time to move you all the way across the park. And yep, clips right in here next to the hotel. Hey, park rating. Excellent stuff. There's and that means that we get a new here. Uh, like this eradicating disease. Off. Ooh, eradicating disease, no dinosaurs with avian pox. I certainly hope that we can eradicate this. Head over to the Paleo Medical Facility. We'll have to research it. We also really want to research the staff center. But we need this pronto to keep our dinos from dying. These are our lifeblood, and we only have two of them. Losing one would be completely devastating. Avian pox dart treatment? Okay, it's looking more and more like they do have avian pox. Oh no, we have insufficient skill in wellness to be able to research. That means we have to go to another staff, somebody who's going to specialize in wellness. Recruit a new scientist here. Faster research. They all have abysmal welfare ratings. So the highest is a two. I didn't think that this character would be the one that we would go to. We could go over here to a, a one, zero, two, or we can grab the one, one, two. Well, all right. I do save a lot of money hiring you, though you're already level two. That means that your your stat line is just garbage. Oh, she's level two as well. Well, they put me in a pinch, but I've got to do it. Heh, I love this. The ranger team is just now getting back, and we have fully moved the building that they planned on, they went over there to repair. It's already been constructed and is operational over here, but they're just arriving. The cure is research, but we're still waiting on the paleo medical facility. Oh, it's feeling like it could be, oh no, sabotage theft. They're just taking my money. I have to be able to afford the medical facility. Let's toss in the hospital right here. Connect it up with the roads. Next thing we need is to be able to get a power source. Running off the generators is only going to be good for so long, and refilling these guys is crazy expensive. Heal my babies, please. Ah, uh, we need a good we get a need a good name for these guys. No sources of avian pox remain, and that gives us back the money that was stolen from us. Ah, uh, never did I think I was going to be excited about being able to build fences. It was always something that I thought was just gonna be a given with this game, but we had to research fences. I'm still hung up on that. But I want to expand this enclosure a little bit, get this going. We're gonna put forest over there. It's still entirely within the view range of this viewing gallery. So all in all, an important expansion, especially because I like to start bringing in a lot of cohabitation in my early exhibits so that this early expansion stays as cheap as possible. We want a little bit more forest, and I was enjoying using this forest type. Because the trees are so sparse, you can still see the dinosaurs. 
Time to get our power plant in. And then we need to figure out how we're gonna lay in. So the science center needs power. So does the bathroom. Can we get it? Is this the pixel perfect placement? I think, I think I nailed it to get everything in there. And then we need to obviously extend and get a power supply up here. That gets us up and running. Yeah, before the generators even ran out. Excellent, neither of them are uh, having anything drawn on them. There's no draw on their power supply, so everything is coming out of our small power station. Only 21 power used out of 60 provided. So we are able to expand from here. And, oh, let's take a look at the hatchery. Who else can we build? We have no, no dinosaur genomes at any percentage. Are you kidding? We don't get any, but we have to go out on expeditions for everything. Ha, oh, this, they just started us from absolute ground zero. No money in the bank, no buildings, no concept of how to build fences, no fossil genomes. Who thought that this park would succeed? Well, you know what's cheaper than going out on expeditions and starting from scratch on a new dinosaur? Yeah, it is getting a guest attraction. It's only worth a hundred appeal, but that is pretty meaningful here at the very beginning of the game. And we, I mean, we have to get the viewing gallery research, some of these base level research. It's gonna be pretty important for us to have, and then we can have that get a little bit extra revenue, a little bit larger profit margin, because the only real cost of having that guest attraction is the draw on your power supply. So we'll be able to afford that for sure. And then we can look at what other dinosaurs we want to bring in. We've got the, I believe these are a sauropod. Ooh, a storm warning. I wonder what kind of storms we get out here. They're pretty friendly with a number of different dinos. So we have a lot of options on who we could bring in next. Okay, open all the shelters. Oh uh, no, all our, it's gonna damage everything. We get the, the damaging storms. Okay, get around and start doing the repairs, guys. I guess so long as none of the dinosaurs escaped, it's not as bad as it could have been, but these are some expensive repairs when you're totaling all of these together. 200,000 to have to fix the hatchery again. It was damaged when we started the scenario. It's time to figure out who we want to add as the next dinosaur to cohabitate in our current exhibit. If we research the Nosteoceratops, then we can start unlocking the Ankylosaurids for free, I believe. Some of the, they have different criteria for what you need to do to be able to unlock them, and they unlock in a progression but that should give us the option to expand on a tight budget. So we're gonna go for this research and then probably look to bring in the, uh, the Nodosaurus into our initial exhibit. Actually, I forgot we have another option available to us. There are some wild dinos still roaming. We missed two initially. I'm waiting so that my, uh, my game compass comes up and helps me find them. It looks like they're hiding out here by the water, we can down these little guys and be able to add them to the exhibit for free. Now, where can we find the Nodosaurus? There he is, in the USA. Fairly cheap expedition, and it's even cheaper if we send Pang here. So off we go. His fine flying economy is what it is. There we are, the Draco Rex, I believe is what these are. They said they were named after a wizarding school. How happy are they going to be? Aw, oh, they are lonely with only two together when well, we sold all their friends. They want ground nut and ground leaf. I don't know if they're gonna make it, if they're gonna be lonely with this level of population. We'll see. All right, Kudo, I know you were brought on as a generalist jack-of-all-trades, but just stay in this room and don't come out until I have a Notosaurus. Oh, uh, no, this Draco Rex has rabies. Well, that is the, the hazard that you take when you pick up wild dinos. I think he's in that shot. He is. It doesn't say Draco Rex with rabies, but he does have it. And you have to take a picture of them with rabies to be able to unlock doing research. Just a little bit of extra busy work for you to feel like you're playing a video game. Even though they're lonely, we brought their comfort up to 80%. I think that is about as good as we're going to do. Yeah, everything else besides population is out of the red. 
Oh, if we can research the Draco Rex to get a full herd of them, then we will. Or maybe these guys will die off before we're able to do that anyway. Wait, he just recovered from rabies. Now what does he have? Alright, give me the scan. He has a side effect from the rabies treatment. You're gonna have to research a secondary treatment. No, don't give me my park rating. I want to see what happened to my dino. Uh, new contract. I'll take picture it. This latest objective is another. He has escalated rabies. The rabies got we hit. He got hit with the dart to chance. heal the rabies, and the rabies just got mad. Is what happened. The scientists are extremely interested in documenting certain behaviors, and photographic evidence is part. Picture of a nodosaurus sleeping. I've seen some of your photos. I was I worried that now the picture it challenges would start giving us dinos that we did not actually have. But we're about to release the Notosaurus, and that'll give us a little bit, little bit of funds to be able to recoup the expenses of developing the new dino. The Notosaurus now has a fully completed genome. So we're going to hop over here. Uh, he has a chance of being antisocial. That's unfortunate. It means that we cannot keep a very large population of him, but it's only 25% chance. What are we able to modify here? Probably not really anything. But we do get to change their color. I like white. High contrast colors. Definitely what I go for. Yeah, we didn't, don't have the research to be able to do this. I'm going to give them a point in resilience. Let's go two points in resilience. Honestly, we're just going to go full resilience. Full chance to be disease resistance. Oh, but that's going to be too challenging for our scientists to develop. Okay, we'll dial it back a little bit here. I'm getting sick and tired of the storms coming through and just wrecking everything. I've never been one to really use these storm protection upgrades, but I think on this scenario we're going to have to go for it because it's just so destructive. And now technically, if we end this the month in the red, we lose the challenge. So, backup generators. You guys get recycled so we generate a little bit more cash. Another storm is coming. We have created the Notosaurs. We started from nothing, no research, no money, and now I give you dinosaurs. Oh, it looks like he's sleeping. It looks like he's sleeping. Pop out the camera. Notosaurus resting. Is resting the same as sleeping? No, it's not. How is it not the same? And he has rabies. Wow, he just got released and he got rabies. All right, go to sleep, little buddy. Go to sleep. We have time lapsed a little bit and we are ready for our next major expansion, opening our second dinosaur enclosure and bringing carnivores into the park. We have to follow the critical path of research here to be able to provide live prey feeders for our new carnivores for them to be happy, but we're not able to start that research until we already have carnivores in the park. He just touched down and he got hurt. I swear, if they hurt him in transit, this guy is so expensive. Gonna have to have a word with a helicopter crews after this one. Also, if he landed down and he was sick, that means he came out of the egg sick. Then I'm gonna be mad at the scientists. So, which one is it gonna be? Let's see. He has rabies. He has rabies fresh out of the lab. How in the world did that happen? Dr. Wu, I want a refund. And they have immediately tried to break out. Well, wonderful. Ranger team, get back here. We're gonna have to sedate them all. Live prey feeder research is now available. And send over the chopper. There he goes, he's on the loose, but he's also been hit with the tranquilizer. Oh, we got him right before he ate that guest. Fantastic, that was a lawsuit waiting to happen. I mean, it technically still is. Ah, dangerous storm is incoming. Well, wonderful, so we'll open all the shelters. I figured out why the park that was built here before failed, and it's definitely because of the storms. The storms just come through, they wreck house. Let's see, are we able to put in this prey feeder? How expensive is it, 100,000? All right, you guys have a prey feeder now, and I barely have enough money for repairs. And just like that, we have no money, so there was a long period 
where after storms I would barely be able to make enough money in between the storms happening to pay for all of the repairs. What I ended up doing was cutting down our scientist staff so that we have a larger profit margin and also installing some of the storm protection upgrades on the buildings. Even though those upgrades cost a quarter of a million dollars to be able to install the upgrade cost on some of these buildings, this one is 300,000. We can unfortunately not upgrade that with storm protection. I would do that in a heartbeat if I could. Uh, but those upgrades, even though they're expensive, will ultimately pay for themselves with how devastating the storms are on this map. Hey, we reached two up. stars. In your cap. <laughs> Excellent. You have one. Now let's see. We probably want to go up to higher level amenities. Get some of these medium amenity modules. And we have a logistics specialist who can knock that out for us. Our other moves that I think we want to do is actually unlock the genomes for these starter dinos so that we're able to create more of them and stabilize their population. They won't be able to live forever, so we want to make sure that they're able to get some friends, especially the uh, Draco Rex. They've always been lonely because we sold most of the herd initially to be able to have our starter cache, and then we only Everything had two. Let's see. Let's You'd take disease-free or picture it. Let's take picture it. That's Photograph a notosaurus drinking. Well, he's close to the water. Oh, it's subjective. these little guys. These are the notosaurs. All right, I'll wait to see if one of them gets over to the water. And we'll grab a photograph worth several hundred thousand dollars of one of these little guys taking a drink. I'd put a beer in front of him for a couple hundred thousand dollars. Now that we understand how to breed more of our original wild-caught dinosaurs, that we these guys got different colors. They Their faces just look so odd. They look like a vacuum cleaner attachment, honestly. We also ran a tour through the exhibit as part of one of the quests that we were given and one of the assignments. And I actually really like the way that this exhibit has been shaping up. It looks so much more dynamic now than it did. I, I really actually like the look of the tours running through it. But yeah, so much more dynamic than just the flat grassland that we had when we started. Our little carnivores are happily moving around as well, and we've made quite a nest egg for ourselves, so it's time for another expansion! Exhibit number three, and here I am looking to kind of replicate what we did in the initial exhibit, bringing over a number of herbivores who will be able to cohabitate happily with each other, but this time we need some bigger players. We need more appeal to keep on pushing our star rating higher and higher. While we have made it beyond three stars, progressing farther gets harder and harder as you go so we need to amp things up and I believe that we already have yes so at the dig site for these guys also contained these guys and they seem like an excellent addition to the park pretty high appeal rating about middling is a, it's a appeal rating of 100 but I think they are because they are naturally social they'll be happy in a large herd oh and they naturally come out red that's amazing oh but we could make them yellow I think we take yellow actually. And then we're going to give them disease resistance because I'm finding that disease resistance, especially when animals are going to be cohabitating in large numbers, is extremely useful. Otherwise you get these epidemics that pass through the entire exhibit and it is a pain to micromanage the uh, ambulance to be able to deal with that. We have everything set up to be able to bring them in. We've got a hotel over here that gets a viewing site of both sides. To be able to see all the way back into the edge of the exhibit, you can go up into the platform or if the dinos are up close, we have this viewing gallery. And once we figure out exactly what the dinos want to have, we have plenty of open space to be able to provide food plants, forest, etc., etc. I'm actually kind of excited to see what our first batch are going to look like because they have low odds at getting a number of different traits so they could look very different depending on what we roll batch size is four survival rate is 75 so hopefully we get these guys in batches of three to look at how we are doing in the overall pace of being able to win this challenge we've been playing for six hours part time is 11 now i wasn't playing super fast at the very beginning i kept on getting locked as i said with all those storms we have a species target of 13 which feels really high so as we keep on adding dinosaurs we're always going to be penalized by this uh penalty until we breach over 13 and that is going to keep on slowing us down so it's kind of a question, do we want to blitz for some really big player dinosaurs who will be able to overcome that appeal rating just because their appeal rating is going to be phenomenal, or do we try and keep up this kind of diversity? 13 different species is a ton. 
I actually think that we're going to try and target high diversity. We'll see. I have a couple plans on how we might be able to do it. We can cram Comsignathus, a tiny, tiny carnivore, into this exhibit. He's fine cohabitating with other carnivores. And if we can fit three different species over here, then we're in decent shape to be able to pull it off. We have all of this zone that we have not uh, developed yet. Here's our park rating coming in. We are growing. We're on the uptrend. Um, I just built a park tour, so I don't want another one. Increase ticket sales or increase the number of guests. These are effectively the same thing, so we'll go for increased ticket sales because it's worth more money. But we have this zone that we have not developed at all. We could fit course, another large exhibit. We could potentially do two smaller exhibits. We could do an aviary. We could do a lagoon. The lagoon's pretty big. We may not be able to squeeze in the lagoon. And we have to, if we want to extend to these other zones, we're going to have to build a monorail. Otherwise, the transportation rating is going to be so bad. Black market dinosaur eggs. So we can sell one of the eggs that we just incubated for a million dollars. Or we can gain publicity rating, but the criminals who want to buy the egg will probably come in and sabotage us. So we're going to sell the egg, and we still get to hatch the other two. So we'll go ahead and do that. Get those to incubate, and then go ahead and rush into the next batch. Because I foresee them wanting to have a larger herd size than there's just two. I feel like they would be lonely with just two. Let's go ahead and assign our scientists and have batch number two coming out. I wonder if we were to... No, I think they get assigned the numbers as soon as they incubate. I'm just wondering if the second batch got hatched first, if they would actually be considered older or not. Hey, we reached the ticket sales without even trying. That's great. So You'll we're doing great in terms of money. Soon we are going to want to expand our staff of scientists, and that's going to eat into the bottom line. But hopefully we're able to populate this exhibit and be able to increase that appeal just a little bit more. Maybe even update these earlier amenities into medium amenities, because right now I believe they're getting maxed out. Yeah, we're having a little bit of overcrowding. Not a lot of overcrowding, but a little bit. These guys are all maxed out. So we're going to be looking to update these to medium because our star rating does not depend on appeal. It depends on your income, and your income is split about evenly between amenities and ticket sales. So you definitely want to keep on updating your amenities to be able to push your star rating to as far as it can go. Oh my gosh, this feeder is infected and somebody's going towards it. All right, we're going to add the task, be able to disinfect the feeder. No, don't, don't eat that. Don't he kick the ranger away. Oh, good. We, we beat him to it. Okay. There were hookworms in that, man. You don't realize what we saved you from. It's bad enough to have to deworm your dogs or cats. Oh, no. The sabotage came through. I can only imagine what it is like having to deworm dinosaurs. So, which fences got shut down? All right. One of the fences in the empty zone and one of the fences in the big exhibit. We'll take our fix-it ranger team. We have all the care for the dinosaurs stacked on the other ranger team. And this one, all he does is he goes around and he fixes stuff in between the storms and other situations such as this for the sabotage, which this challenge uh, map does have a higher chance of sabotage. So we've seen a lot of what they can do. The fences going down is probably one of the least dangerous ones. There are gates that they will open. That's pretty bad. They'll knock out your power stations. That's pretty bad and they will also just steal a bunch of money from you, which is annoying if you don't have high profits. Right now, just being stolen from wouldn't hurt us too badly, um, but it would still be annoying. Another penalty for this challenge map is that the uh, tasks take longer, so it takes forever to be able to incubate, guys. We have to just sit around and wait. Oh no, somebody died. Who died? Wait, wait, wait. How did they... They escaped, and then they died of old age. <laughs> oh. <laughs> Should I be sad? I feel like that's just hilarious. That he's like, oh, I'm free! And he just keels over and dies. While we wait for batch number two to cook a little bit, we can go ahead and add the ground fruit and forest to this new exhibit. We're going to look around, take the environment, and then go over. Is there one that will provide both tall fruit and ground fruit? There is! Excellent! So this grove will get planted all over the place. Maybe going along here, a little bit in the water. 
nice stuff and then we're gonna go to our forest and I r just really love this sparse forest because it still lets you see the dinosaurs when they are inside it which is my biggest gripe for the really dense forest is that the dinosaurs are actually able to hide from you even as the player you're not able to see them and click on them figure out if they are hurt or even if yeah whatever you need to transport them it's very bothersome Okay, the other batch is about half done, so we are going to release via airlift and drop them in. Can I drop them into the central island? Nah, we'll just drop them around it. Hopefully, the way that we prepped the exhibit is to their liking. They get an excellent view, I'm going to give them that. The uh, coastline of England is very beautiful. Now they have tried to sabotage our food source. Wow, the saboteurs just will not give it up. Thankfully, we only have those feeders in that one location, so it's not a big deal. Here they are. Yep, they are lonely, so they like having herds. Let's see, how big of a herd do they want? Oh, they're okay with two. They want a little bit more open space, a little bit more forest. Let's watch them expand their territory. I always find it fascinating. That they oh, he's already hurt. He came out of the lab hurt? This keeps on happening. How is this possible? All right. What happened to him? What did the lab screw up this time? Uh, he has an untreatable disease. He came out with the common cold. He's got the sniffles. Dino sniffles. That just sounds disgusting. We got three of their buddies ready to hop on over. And then we're going to want to see who we want to cohabitate with these guys. Let's see. Who are their potential friends? Other sauropods, ankylosaurids, or stegosaurids? So we've got options open and available to us. I want to go with a fun sauropod. Who's somebody big? A big star attraction kind of guy like the Diplodocus. But I have insufficient skill to be able to get him. Well, I guess we were needing to expand our staff anyway. So we need to be able to get more genetics. We need a genetics specialist on staff. Yeah, we have these two fours, but that's not enough to be able to get us that uh, high level dino research. Who's a good candidate? We could grab, oh, but you're so expensive. I guess you are level three already. Mm, this is a little better. But it does that give us enough to be able to get it? I wanna make sure that we actually are able to get this. We can only use three scientists, so we have to have a scientist with a skill of four or more. Wow, so I'm gonna to have to start shelling out an extra 50,000 a minute to be able to get my Diplodocus and pay a million signing bonus. You guys are just running a racket. The things I do for these dinos, the things I do. So we assign our three fours, <laughs> they combine their skills. I wonder if I should have actually held off in transporting the new guys into the exhibit until the common cold had already passed through. Now they are likely all to catch it and a few of them will develop pneumonia. Well, hopefully they all pull through. They seem like tough guys. They look so weird with this kind of undulating ridge and really wide, thick tail, but very thin bodies. They, they honestly, they remind me of fleas, is what they do with that kind of body shape, but, but don't tell them that, that's just gross. Oh no, there's a problem with the tour. They just wanted to walk past. So the tour is driven by park staff. I don't understand how they are such terrible drivers. While we are going on expedition to be able to develop the Diplodocus, I want to find where is Compsignathus. Compsignathus is all the way out here, so he's a bit of an advanced research project. I think we could still go for it though. We need to be able to squeeze out the dino diversity in any way we can. And fitting an extra dino in here with the, oh my gosh, flipped the whole Jeep. They did it again. <laughs> they destroyed it. They fully destroyed the Ranger team. But being able to fit another species in with the carnivores is not something you're usually able to do. Contagnesis gives you a unique opportunity in that regard. And I would really like to capitalize on that because we have to reach that 13 species still just feels so high to me. Usually I've seen scenarios at like 10 or 11 and even that is stretching at the very end to be able to reach it. What is happening here? We have a full traffic jam. These guys are just turning into each other. Ooh, my staff are so brain dead. Were they actually honking? Yeah, yeah, they're honking at each other. Great. I love that the tour lines have these little lights to show their path. The little glow just makes the exhibits at night look amazing. 
Oh no, one of the original dinos has passed away. These two were the first two dinosaurs that we ever put on display. One has now died of old age. I guess we should start up a batch to be able to keep their population high. And we just got the Diplodocus as a viable genome, so we're going to be doing a lot of work synthesizing here. All right, the Diplodocus stands before us. Large appetite and antisocial. I want to breed antisocial out of them, so let's modify the genome, see what we can do here. Also, most importantly, we're able to potentially change their color. What color do we want them to be? I like the really light colors. High contrast is definitely beneficial. Take antisocial away, and then with three more mods, I think we go for resiliency. Rather than actually pushing it into being able to get social, I want them to be as resilient as possible. So we're going to save that and set them up to incubate. Now that we are right on the cusp of being able to release the Diplodocus, our sixth unique dinosaur species in the park, we have these awesome enclosures. This one we are still bringing up to its full population. And then, of course, the carnivores over here waiting to be able to get Compsognathus as a mini friendly roommate for them. But I think this is where we are going to call it for today's episode. Stay tuned for the next episode where we see if we will be able to reach five stars within the time limit. Because here we are playing on Jurassic difficulty for this challenge map. We have a part time of 11 hours. We've been playing for seven and we'll have to see if we have been playing too slow or if we managed to eke out the victory in the end. Thank you guys for watching and stay tuned for the next episode.